Hi everybody, it's Tim with Engadget, and this is the new Tesla Model S. You might remember we reviewed the Tesla Roadster a couple of years ago. This car is so much more advanced, it's hard to believe they're from the same company. As you can see, it's a much bigger car than the Tesla Roadster. It's got this beautiful new body that looks a little bit like an Aston Martin or a Maserati, perhaps. But it's built upon a chassis that was designed from day one to be a pure electric vehicle. The battery pack is in the floor of the car, so it keeps the weight of those batteries down low. The electric motor is situated between the rear wheels for great weight distribution. And because the battery pack is so flat, there's a lot of room inside for seating. In fact, you can fit up to seven people in there if you get the optional jump seats, which go in the back there. And it starts with this key, and the car can actually detect the proximity of the key. So you put it in your pocket, and as you walk up, it welcomes you by putting the door handles out. Now, the interior in the Tesla Roadster was Spartan at best. In here, it's very nice. In fact, it's almost up to BMW or Mercedes levels, but not quite. We've got nice leather on the dash and some nice wood insets, and overall, things are pretty comfortable, but they're not quite to the same level as luxury manufacturers. The headliner at Alcantara is nice, but the stitching is a little bit rough. Some of these plastic inserts are kind of cheap feeling, so it doesn't quite feel like a very high-end car, but overall it's a huge improvement over the Roadster. And of course, almost all of that gets put to shame by this massive 17-inch touch panel that's situated here in the middle of the display. All the car's controls, pretty much, other than the gas of the brake and the steering wheel, are done right here on this touch panel. So let's walk through things quickly. You can go through internet radio or FM, AM, XM uh, radio as well. And yes, there's an active 3G connection on the car, so you can get internet radio directly to the car. You can get your real-time power consumption uh, displayed on this graph here, which you can control 5 or 30 miles if you like, average or instant. You can get the HD rear view camera, the only HD rear view camera in production at the moment. You've also got navigation here. The mapping data comes from Google, but Google doesn't actually handle the navigation itself. We could have some issues with the navigation of the car, but overall you can do Google point of interest search. And again, we've got full satellite imagery here as well. And perhaps the most talked about feature of this car, a full web kit browser built into the dashboard, which you can, yes, control even while you're driving the car. So it's not perhaps the most uh, responsive browser in the world, but you can do full screen 17 inch web surfing while you're driving if you like. But uh, let's talk about more important things like actually driving the car. So we're on the highway now, cruising in the Model S, and the first thing you notice is, of course, that there's not a lot to notice from an audio standpoint. It is, of course, a very quiet car. We're talking about a pure EV here. There's no hybrid motor to be humming away or anything like that, so it's very quiet. But even going beyond the fact that there's no internal combustion engine, Tesla's done a lot of engineering to make this car as quiet as possible. There's a lot of sound insulation in the wheel wells, and uh, the aerodynamics of the car are such that it makes hardly any noise at all. We're going about 50 miles an hour on the highway now, have a conversation very easily, or you can enjoy this 7.1 surround system that they put in here too. Now the driving dynamics of the car are a little bit complicated to explain. This is a very heavy car, 4,600 pounds, which definitely puts it at the top of its weight class by a long shot. But again, because the battery pack is mounted so low, it actually handles very well for a car of this weight. It's not exactly nimble or light on its feet like the Roadster was, but it handles very well, very reassuringly. And with the rear wheel drive, it's definitely a lot of fun. With your foot down, you can definitely kick the tail out and have a little bit of fun, at least until the traction control kicks in. But you can turn that off. Now that we're driving, of course, interacting with the car through the 17-inch touch panel is a little bit more difficult than when you're staying still. But thankfully, Tesla's made all the buttons big, so they're pretty easy to find. And the important ones, like changing the temperature and the volume, are always in the same place, so you can pretty quickly get some muscle memory going. But there's another problem with this thing, and that's glare. This is a fairly glossy panel, and as we've got the sunroof here, at times the sun will shine through, reflect off of there, and go right in your eyes, and there's no way to block it out. That can be a little bit annoying. There's also a lot of shiny bits in here and chrome on the mirrors, so you might want to wear some sunglasses when you're driving your Model S. Now, because this is an EV, you drive it a little bit differently than a normal car. There's no key to turn. You don't even really do anything when you want to drive. You just get in the car and you pull away. Uh, there's no shifting, of course, because there's no real transmission. There's just one gear, gas pedal, brake pedal. That's all you need to worry about. And as this is an EV, that gas pedal is very, very responsive. You've got amazing instant torque at any RPM. You just step on the gas pedal and uh, away you go. This has got the performance package, which means it's a little bit quicker than the average Model S. It'll do 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds, which is pretty healthy for a 4,600 pound car. 
that's an option you can get on top of a 300 mile range Model S. It's certainly one that we've been enjoying. So the Model S is a great car and a huge leap forward over the Roadster that came before, but there's one thing I haven't talked about yet, and that's price. This car, as configured, is a little over $100,000. Sure, you can get a Model S for just a little bit over $60,000 if you don't get any options and if you go with the smallest battery pack, but really you're probably going to want the performance package, and that means you're going to be looking at $90,000 minimum. And for that, you're looking at a car that drives about as well as a BMW, but doesn't quite have all the interior specifications that a high-end BMW or Mercedes has, the kind of car that you can get for that kind of money. So right now, if you're doing a direct comparison to this against a BMW, it's probably not going to work out on top. But in a couple of years, when there are charging stations everywhere and you don't have to worry about range anxiety so much, we'll finally be at a time where you can compare this car purely on merits against a BMW or a Mercedes. And we think, in a lot of ways, this one comes out on top.